G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and I'm joined by Flynn as always. And just for any new viewers, uh, I thought we'd just introduce ourselves. My name's Max. I work as a cybersecurity graduate at a um, big finance company and I've been there for about two years and most of my work sort of involves uh, cybersecurity engineering. Um, and yeah, so I'm here with my, my uh, sort of industry colleague, Flynn, who is also in the cybersecurity industry. Yeah, yeah. So typically I've been involved with a lot of GRC stuff, but recently I've actually changed roles to a more, uh, I suppose, standard cybersecurity role, more all-encompassing. So GRC, but also um, technical stuff, but you know, just blue team stuff in general. Yeah, awesome. And today uh, it's a little bit of a different episode, but we're going to talk about the the big news at the moment that everyone's uh, everyone's chatting about. And um, I'm sure everyone is uh, fairly familiar with at this point, the CrowdStrike slash Windows outage. So first of all, we'll just go on what is CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike is a company based in the United States. They run a product called CrowdStrike Falcon. And that CrowdStrike Falcon is actually the thing that caused the outages on last Friday. Now, CrowdStrike Falcon you can kind of think of it as an as your standard sort of anti-virus, anti-malware software. That's practically what it is. Like we don't need to go massively in depth in what it actually does, but it acts as a antivirus system that protects your endpoints on your system. So what an endpoint is, it could be anything like a phone or a laptop or a um, you know a PC. It could be anything, anything that connects to the internet or um, within your system. So it monitors these endpoints. And it sees if there's any suspicious behavior and it reports back to a system that will uh, log the behavior and potentially cut off any of these devices if they detect anything strange going on. So that's CrowdStrike Falcon. That's their product. And that's what ultimately caused the blue screen on Friday. Yeah. Oh, well, Friday for us Australians, I suppose it was technically Thursday might, for the Americans. Yeah, it might have been Friday morning, I st- yeah, but I mean, some places are still feeling the ramifications of this as well. That's right. Um, basically, the remediation process, um, you have to have privileged credentials to do so. Yeah. Uh, so, if, And you also have to have an internet connection. So certain things that are connected to the internet or, you know, they can't get certain people in, it's an absolute nightmare to fix. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's been deemed the, the blue screen uh, national day or something like that. Yeah, they, um, they've, they've categorized a, uh, yeah, they've called it National Blue Screen Day. So um, we'll probably be hearing about it for the next couple of years. But yeah, um, yeah. so in terms of what actually happened, uh, so where that agent that we we're talking about called CrowdStrike Falcon, uh, imagine an application on your computer like Microsoft Word or, you know, a YouTube app or a game, anything like that operates a level above your operating system, okay? Now, CrowdStrike Falcon sits a level below your operating system because you want to be able to analyze what's happening on the computer with the most permissions possible. You don't want to be, you know, restricted by what permissions you can get. And that's why this this system needs to operate uh, lower than the operating system. Now, Windows specifically, or maybe not specifically, but Windows has a fail-safe system, lots of fail-safe systems, where if it detects an issue in the operating system level or below that, in the what's called the kernel level, it's going to, as a precaution, blue screen, restart your Windows operating system. Because if something goes wrong in you know the kernel level, that can potentially cause permanent damage to your computer. So yeah. that's that's what happened is that the there was a bug in the code of the agent. And that, because it's at the kernel level, that caused Windows to forcibly restart to try and fix the issue. Now, yeah. yeah. So for anyone that maybe finds that confusing, basically something similar is um, the Riot software. So the Riot um, and anti-cheat sort of software. If you want to go back and look at our episode we had with um, Ryan, um, he that he goes over that as well. It's a similar thing where it's at the kernel level. It's basically as you boot up, um, Windows will run these processes, and if it realizes something wrong, it goes, "Oh, hold on, um, this isn't right, and we need to start this again." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, 
we'll dive into a little bit of the technical side of what actually happened. Now, I'm going to I'm going to try and explain this, you know, simply but technically and then afterwards we'll kind of give you a, a more a more brief version. But just for our technical listens, listeners. So what happened is in that Falcon agent software uh, it has things that connect to the OS and uh, have instructions for the operating system called, it's called a driver. And this is just the code that runs at the operating system or kernel level. Now, this driver contains lots of different channel files. And what a channel file does is it's just a, a file that is, you know, within that driver that does a certain task. It has some kind of a function. Now, a specific channel file that was updated when CrowdStrike pushed an update, that file, for some reason, it was full of zeros. So that file, the actual information inside of it was null. It was full of zeros. I'll put a screenshot on the screen right now so that you can see what that actually looked like, but it was full of null. So when CrowdStrike's application was running, it had a bit of code that did a thing called a pointer dereference, which means it very basically points at a file to look at. And when it looked at this file, it was full of nulls. And in computing, that's very bad. If you have a null file or a null, uh, you know, uh, bit of text. Something or... pointing to a null, it's, um, it, it's basically just doesn't work at all. It yeah. doesn't work. So computers don't like working with null values. So that is what caused the crash, very basically. So, Flynn, maybe maybe in um in a little bit simpler terms, uh, do you want to just go through that one more time? Yeah, I mean, basically, the computer they don't like they like ones and zeros, as we know, um, and it tries to point at absolutely nothing, and then it doesn't like that at all. It, it, it part of its process, it can't find where it needs to go, and because of that, it's basically crashing. Going back to the start. Um, but, uh, in very layman's terms, I suppose. Um, the one thing that I suppose is very pressing, I've seen a lot of people um, speculating over this. Do you think this was a specific targeted attack or do you think that this was a mistake by CrowdStrike, basically? So what it's looking at, so sort of why why it happened, if we're looking at it, it's to me, I've seen a few conspiracy theories. Some people think it's a false flag attack, which what that means is that the some the powers that be, you know, the Illuminati, they've looked at the systems that are, you know, affiliated with maybe CrowdStrike, maybe the government, and they've planned this to happen so that they can see which companies aren't in the system yet. And that's that's a conspiracy theory. I I find that unlikely. Because what CrowdStrike has said, and they've been very transparent the whole time with, you know, talking about why it happened and that's lined up. So I would kind of trust them when they've said what's happened is a developer has pushed an update to this, uh, adding this channel folder in. And that channel folder has just, for some reason, that there, there wasn't proof checks in place, or maybe they were testing it on a Linux machine first or a Mac machine because those were unaffected. And they have, you know, not done quality control, which just means testing and testing and testing. They haven't tested it. They pushed it. They slipped up Friday morning. You know, they pushed out this change and it has, you know, broken everything. I think that's that's more likely than a false flag attack or even a cyber attack. If this is a cyber attack, you know, some some there would be a smoking gun somewhere. Like we would be seeing an actor you know, claiming responsibility for it. That's usually what we'd see. Yeah, I tend to agree that I don't think that this was an attack. I think that this was a genuine mistake. And the scale of this mistake is obviously huge, but I suppose on the bright side, as you said, CrowdStrike has sort of been pretty transparent about what's gone wrong. Um, but also on another note, um, you know, this shows that uh, the digital world is not ready for this and it shows that someone could actually do an attack like this like imagine if someone did do a whole takeover and they did something like this and they're taking down basically the whole world i assume that this was probably in the trillions in terms of losses because of every company in the world was basically yeah. hit um so a little bit more specifically imagine if this wasn't a 
you know, just a bug that caused a crash. Imagine if this was a vulnerability that was put in. Yeah. A, um, a buffer overflow. I've read, I saw this in a YouTube video. It's not my original thought, but if it was a buffer overflow or, you know, it allowed for some level of exploitation and it went undetected, could you imagine what would have happened? Yeah. And that it goes to show that for starters, this really shouldn't have happened to begin with. As you said, there should have been QA in place, but there is a lot of pressure on companies like this because of, you know, they are an antivirus. Like sometimes that these things, you know, they're trying to get it out as soon as possible, whether it's because of higher ups, whether because, you know, if there's a particular vulnerability that might be there, well, you have to run up the, you have to weigh your odds of, oh, do we push this too earlier than expected and take the risk? Or do we, you know, do our due diligence, but this vulnerability could be on our system for multiple days. Um, Clearly they've, done something clear very wrong um and they haven't i would say that this is actually just bad practice isn't it just like a oh this it happened oh well this clearly this shouldn't be happening but companies like this do um unfortunately face that dilemma um, all the time as part of their business model but you know when you're in so many systems as we saw um you need to have more due diligence and i suppose you shouldn't be having these crunch times as often when you are that um, important. Now, CrowdStrike has said that they update these files almost every day, um, which is all well and good, but maybe they need to tone it back a little bit and um, and actually make sure that every update is being thoroughly tested rather than pushed out. Most companies won't push to pu- to production on Friday, so you'll, you'll find. Usually that's, yeah. that's a... Uh, it's not like a coding smell, which is a, a like a coin term in in the um, software engineering sort of industry, but it's a bad practice and it's bad juju generally. Yeah, yeah. And you just know that this it was probably some poor guy that was trying to get off um, on a Friday, and he's gone. Oh, it'll be fine. And you know, it's no. that one time, and that's why that's why you need it to go through so many different processes rather than it is one guy that's just pushing the production. That shouldn't really happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, we don't know if, if the managers, you know, were still complacent with this or if the employee wasn't uh, straight up or, you know, didn't, uh, wasn't specific about the change or, you know, but there should have been something in place to actually stop this. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And uh, just another thing. So, uh, some of you may be wondering, you know, why was it such a big pain in the ass to get everything back up? Why are there systems that were still down four days later? You know, what was the big issue? Now, the problem was in certain cases, I think it was about 30% of the cases, maybe a little bit less, maybe 10 or 20%, when your computer blue screened, it would be in something called a boot loop, which that means that it's repetitively um, uh, rebooting. And the issue is that sometimes this can take your uh, device off of the internet. Now, when... CrowdStrike went to push their change and make an update, a fix to this, which happened about two hours later. If your device was offline, then it wasn't going to be given the update. So they've basically unplugged your system and now you can't connect it to the internet to give it an update, meaning that someone with technical skill has to go in and manually connect to that uh, computer, boot it in safe mode, manually delete that file, then reconnect it to the internet and get the new update. So that was yeah. what you needed to do to be able to fix the issue. And when you have a company like Coles in Australia, that is a massive supermarket, and they have you know hundreds of machines that are out. There was a lick of land uh, near me that was out for like you know five or six days. I'm guessing because it took their entire system o- offline, and someone had to go in and manually change every single computer. That was the the main issue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Max, what do we actually think about the future for our society in general? So we spoke about how this goes to show the absolute strain technology has on us as a society. And if it, if it fails, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, and also for CrowdStrike in general. So CrowdStrike, I said, I, I'm still a fan of their using their product, um, but it goes to show that Maybe there's more due diligence that wasn't in place. Maybe, you know, it's a one-off. If it is a one-off, that's a very unfortunate one-off. Mm. Um, what, what do we think, Max? Honestly, I thought we were better than this. That's my genuine opinion because, you know, as we've said many times on this podcast, 
technology was very janky in the in the 90s, 2000s, and even up until the late 2010s. And I thought we were starting to get on a on a on a sort of trail where we were having good quality assurance. There was good measures in place, and big companies were putting the right protections in place to stop this kind of thing from happening. And you know, this is the same sort of case where Optus wasn't prepared for a update on their systems that took their entire network offline. You know, and I'm sure that wouldn't happen to them again. But you know, with this sort of thing, it just shows that. Yeah, quality assurance is gone. And, you know, I thought we were better than this. That's that's generally my, my thing. Yeah, I think that going forward, a lot of companies might need to think about, you know, diversifying their products and stuff like that. You know, certain companies have gone down completely. And it's, and it's not even just like some small companies are probably hit the hardest because, you know, they don't have those um, IT people. But, you know, if you're a big company, you would hope that... So, you don't have a singular point of failure where if that goes wrong, your whole company goes down, which was the case with a lot of um, places around the world. Yeah. So if I want to summarize my thoughts into genuinely how we would improve this, there's two two parts of it. It's testing, 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 testing to you know make sure that you're not making silly mistakes because this just seems like a silly mistake because what people have said in the aftermath of it is that this could have been prevented with an if statement. If the pointer is null, don't point there. So, yeah. um, testing, 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 testing. And also making sure that you have backups in place, for God's sake. Having a fail safe in place so that if something breaks, it doesn't kill your machine. And coming to a system that runs on Windows kernel, you would really have hoped that they had a backup in place in case, for whatever reason, it breaks, which there wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Um, it, as you said, fail safe from a CrowdStrike perspective, a uh, fail safe from you know our due diligence and also companies' due diligence. Um, you know, it, you really got to think about where can things fail, um, and how can you prevent it and recover. Yeah, yeah exactly. It will go, it goes to show there's a lot of companies out there say, "Oh, that'll never happen," and it does happen. We're too big to fail. To yeah. fail. That's usually yeah. the term. Uh, I'd recommend um, the you know our listeners looking up the different flight paths and stuff. That was I think a really big shocker um, to show how much the world just kind of stood still. Yeah, I suppose the atmosphere probably had a bit of time to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, recover from Taylor Swift's uh, you know jet emissions. <laughs> <laughs> you get some people mad. About that. It's fine. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.